criminal trial of Felix Espinoza Quiraz packs a massive dose of chaos in a courthouse in Oregon. The 55-year-old man is arraigned in court on accounts of rape, sodomy, incest, and witness tampering. He is defending the charges against him in court with his attorney present. Felix's accuser is called to the stand and shares her testimony, which agitates him. Felix starts to make disturbing remarks against his accuser. The judge takes immediate action and excuses the jury. Felix's attorney tries to calm him down, but he refuses to heed. The prosecutor removes the witness from this aggravated situation, and Felix loses it completely. He overturns the defense table with his head and charges toward the witness. A bailiff and his attorney try to restrain him, which seems to be successful. The bailiff further attempts to restrain him with her taser, then Felix runs away. She pursues after him. The judge and those remaining in the courthouse watch on. The bailiff enters the camera picture, and there is no sign of Felix or her taser, but he is still in the courtroom. The police enter the scene and effectively removes the witness. Felix is restrained and cuffed by the police. The tables are returned in place, and normalcy returns to the court. He is returned to the courtroom in handcuffs by two police officers. He further receives additional sentences, including two counts of sexual abuse in the first degree and witness tampering. Felix is sentenced to 10 years in prison. In a murder case in the 5th District, Utah, a man, Tristan Lamoureux, is found guilty of a murder charge of his spouse, Misty Lamoureux. The details around his wife's death are gruesome, as Lamoureux shoots his wife five times in the head after a heated argument in their apartment. According to police reports, Lamoureux tries to escape, leaving his wife's mortified body in the bathroom. The day of his sentencing arrives, and five police officers guard him on every side to ensure he does not behave indecently in the courthouse. During the sentencing, the presiding judge, Michael Westfall, calls on the late victim's brother, Jason Wilson, to the stand to deliver an impact statement. As Wilson approaches the stand, he stares at Lamoureux with great intimidation. Lamoureux remains unbothered by the showy intimidation displayed by Wilson. As Wilson delivers his impact statement, emotions run through the courtroom. However, he turns his attention to the unbothered Lamoureux and continues to deliver his statement. Since action speaks louder than words, Wilson makes a shocking charge towards seated Lamoureux who police officers still surround, that a fight begins as the once peaceful court is in complete chaos. Lamoureux stands and is ready to have a piece of the action, but a police officer tackles him to the ground. The police officers did not spare any second in restraining Wilson as the court chairs kept spinning. In the end, there was a restoration of order in the courtroom. Strangely, other criminals in the courtroom remain unfazed by the chaos and maintain their composure. Wilson is cuffed by the police officers and led away from the courtroom. Lamoureux sits down on his chair and continues rocking in his chair. Wilson receives no sentence for the incident he causes at the courthouse. Lamoureux receives 15 years to life imprisonment for the first-degree murder of his wife, Misty Lamoureux. In Pike County Justice Court, Mississippi, where we find Sidney Newsom appearing before District Judge Aubrey Rimes in shackles and handcuffs. Newsom is receiving a sentence over a domestic violence charge. One will question the mind of Newsom as, after reviewing some paperwork, he starts to dance, yet maintains his composure. However, his transport officer cautions him by tapping her fingers on the table, causing him to get agitated. Minutes later, his family, mainly his mother and brother, enter the courtroom. In what seems like a family reunion, Newsom eagerly walks towards them, 
However, his transport officer cautions him again to return to his position. Judge Rhymes signals Newsom's family to take their seats in the courtroom. Moments later, Newsom is handed some documents, which he signs, and they are handed to Judge Rhymes. However, Newsom seems agitated over the matter and loses composure. Then, Newsom pressed Judge Rhymes, who quickly signals that the defendant is removed immediately from the court, but this motion did not sit well with Newsom as he kept pacing the courtroom. Finally, his transport officer leads him toward the day. Something unexpected happens. The clerks at the front desk run for their lives. There is a reaction from Newsom's mother, who his brother holds back. His transport officer tries to pin Newsom down, but he quickly overpowers her. He starts throwing and destroying things on the judge's table. Judge Rhymes finally has it with Newsom when he throws a telephone toward him. As Newsom continues throwing paper toward the judge, Judge Rhymes barely moves to restore order. Newsom's brother joined in the act, although it is unsure whether he is helping the judge or his brother. Four more transport officers enter the court to restrain Newsom. As the officers take Newsom from the courtroom and calm the tense situation, Judge Rhymes returns to his seat. The clerks try to clean up the mess and return everything to normalcy. Newsom is charged with contempt of the court and receives additional sentencing of 48 hours in jail. An extreme case involving 19-year-old Dexter Johnson happens live in Houston, Texas. Johnson is found guilty of capital murder. This case started a year ago when Johnson and his accomplices robbed 23-year-old Maria Rapparis and her 17-year-old boyfriend, Hugh Nyo. After the robbery, Johnson and others took the couple to a woody forest, raped Maria, and executed them. Johnson admits to the rape, but denies being the shooter that killed the couple. However, the jury dismissed his statement and found him guilty of murder. The courthouse is filled with the defendants and the victims' families. The presiding judge passes this heavy sentence. Dexter Darnell Johnson, the jury has found you guilty of capital murder. In accordance with the laws of the state of Texas, this court hereby assesses your punishment of death. The court is dismissed and Johnson remains seated. Johnson's family reacts emotionally to the judge's sentence. Johnson's mother spares no moment to reach out to her son on death row. The police officers in the courtroom charge to the scene. Johnson shockingly reacts as he charges toward the victim's family. There is chaos as an attorney takes cover under the table. Several officers restrain Johnson. Others try to restore tranquility to the gallery, but it is not over, as the chaos spreads through the court's hallway. The upset caused a family member to require medical attention. Later, Johnson appealed for 12 years to reverse the death penalty and failed. However, 24 hours before the execution date, his lawyers made an insanity plea deal, and Johnson remains on death row. <laughs>